ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Today we have my top 10 favorite designer fragrances for the fall slash autumn of 2020. I'm excited to tell you what my list is, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin this list of my top 10 favorite fall slash autumn designer fragrances for the year 2020, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews here on YouTube, but also top lists just like this list, giveaways, unboxings, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. This way, whenever I do upload these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. Now, I personally love the autumn time. I love it when it gets a little bit cold outside, it's sweater weather, you feel that chillness in the air, and you can pull out the fragrances that are a little bit heavier in nature. So you went from wearing your bright, fresh, citrusy, aquatic fragrances to now wearing your dark, warm, rich, resinous, sometimes woodsy and balsamic fragrances. And you'll see a lot of spice in this list as well. We have cardamom, we have cinnamon. Um, I'm really excited to share this list with you. So without further ado, I'm going to be sharing with you my picks, my favorite fragrances. Uh, these are the ones that I foresee myself wearing quite often in the autumn of 2020. So here are my top 10 favorite designer fragrances for the autumn of 2020. I should start off by saying that number 10 is actually a tie between two different fragrances. And the reason for that is because, and you'll see why I'm featuring one in this list as opposed to the other, because the other fragrance I actually let a close friend of mine borrow at the moment so that he can review it for his YouTube channel. But the fragrance that I don't have with me on hand is Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum by Victor and Rolf. I love that fragrance. It's spicy. You have the cinnamon, the tobacco. You have this added warmth in there and it goes in a much different direction than the Eau de Toilette and I really enjoy it. I actually find it to be quite similar to Azzaro Wanted by Night in terms of the notes that it uses. But the one that I'm going to be featuring in this list, which I'm going to be wearing just as often because I'm actually testing this one out in preparation for my upcoming review is by the company John Varvatos and this is called 20 uh, or XX Roman numeral 20 and this is a fragrance made to commemorate their 20th anniversary edition right this is their 20th anniversary edition I should say the brand has been around for 20 years and with this fragrance in particular it has cardamom it has coffee and it also has this red apple note that makes it quite interesting. As a matter of fact, it kind of reminds me of a fragrance that Ralph Lauren would put out, maybe in the Polo Red collection or something like that. And for a split second, it also kind of reminded me a little bit of CH for Men by Carolina Herrera. So I'm gonna be wearing it a lot more often. You have my word on that. I really do wanna review it for my channel. I don't feel quite ready to review it yet, but after a few more days of testing, I'll put myself in front of the camera for you guys. The next one on my list, my number nine spot, is a designer fragrance that I feel like was the best release of that year. I think it's 2019 when it came out, and I remember mentioning as such in one of my previous videos. This one is by the company Moschino, and it's called Toy Boy. Very odd and quirky, and I guess some might even say kitschy looking bottle, but the fragrance inside is gorgeous. So it's a spicy rose scent. And I guess that's why it's not a little higher up on my list, just because while I personally really enjoy the smell, I like the creative risks that the brand took when making this fragrance, I personally feel as though this one might be a little bit hard for me to recommend to people, just because rose is not a note that's so common on the designer side of the fragrance industry, especially among current trends. Usually they're very sweet, tonka bean, vanilla sort of fragrances, and this is very much so a deviation from that trend. The next one on this list is the most inexpensive fragrance on this entire list of my top 10 fall for 2020, and this fragrance is a tobacco-based scent. I think you can pick this one up for $17 and change. I think a lot of you probably already know what it is. It's from the company Zara, and it's called Warm Black. Now, this is a fragrance that is similar to Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. So it has the vanilla, it has the tobacco. Sometimes it kind of reminds me of Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. Sometimes it's reminding me of 
Rouge Smoking by BDK. It has this cherry-like sweetness in the opening. It has the vanilla. It definitely has that pipe tobacco in here. It's a very warm, dark, cozy, but mysterious fragrance for the autumn of 2020. Zara Warm Black, I think is a solid fragrance for 17 bucks. You really can't go wrong. The next time you are in your local Zara, please definitely check this one out. Get yourself a bottle if you can, because as I'm sure you know, Zara discontinues their fragrances quite often. The next one is a collaboration between perfumers, Ohelian Guichard and also Natalie Lorson. These are excellent perfumers and I think that the autumn and the winter are really the two best seasons in which to wear this fragrance. And this is one that I've had in my collection for a very long time. As a matter of fact, my stepfather loves wearing this fragrance. This is one of his favorite fragrances out there. And this one by the company Zadig and Voltaire is called This Is Him. Now, the one thing that you need to know about this fragrance is that it's a smoky vanilla. If you like sweeter scents and you like a little bit of smoke, a little bit of incense in your fragrances, incense and vanilla is mo mainly and mostly what you're going to be getting from this fragrance. Yeah, sure, there's black pepper, there's grapefruit. There are a few other ingredients in here as well, but it's really mostly about the vanilla and the incense. And wow, I really enjoy this one. This is him by Zadig and Voltaire. And this is the original, which came out a few years ago. The next one is actually a rebranded or repackaged version of an existing fragrance. And um, I think it smells quite similar to the original. I know this was like a 2020 rebranding. They made the bottle look a little bit different, but honestly, in terms of the smell, I have the original. I have this one, which I happily purchased because I love the fragrance. And this one is by Christian Dior and it's Dior Um Intense. So, you know, Dior Um has this really nice, natural smelling iris note. It's smooth, it's floral, it's a little creamy, it's waxy, it's lipsticky. This one adds that vanillic warmth in the base, a little bit of sensuality, very sort of alluring, cozy, and romantic fragrance. And of course, Dior Homme Parfum adds this leather component to it. So I particularly really like this fragrance and I'm happy I purchased it because I find that it's such an amazing composition. And whenever brands can do something like this, actually push the boundaries and release something that doesn't necessarily follow all the trends, I really must applaud that brand and I commend them for having a mind of their own essentially and not focusing so much on what's popular elsewhere, but kind of just doing their own thing and, you know, doing it in the interest of artistic expression as opposed to let's meet a certain number or a certain quota this year. The next fragrance is a classic fragrance and I purchased this right around the time when it came out. I know for a while it was like discontinued and people were paying like three, four hundred dollars on eBay, which is absolutely insane. But this one by Thierry Mugler is called Pure Havan, Angel Men Pure Havan. And I love this fragrance because it, it's different from the original. So the original has this chocolate, patchouli, tar, ethyl maltal thing going on in there. This one is honey and tobacco. There are a lot of tobacco honey fragrances on the market. And yeah, some people might look at it like, okay, just go ahead and add this one to the list. But I do find that it has just a tiny bit of that original Amen DNA in here, probably perhaps on account of the patchouli note, but it's a very well done fragrance and a really different tobacco scent. Of course, the closest thing on the market currently is Zerjoff Naxos, but on the designer level, I really enjoy this one, Pure Havan by Thierry Mugler. The next fragrance on this list is one that, yet again, came out a few years ago. I could be wrong, but I think it came out in 2016. And of all the fragrances that this company has put out, this is my favorite. And they've tried with a few different flankers and they've tried with a few different collections, uh, but I think this has to be one of my favorite collections and it's obviously one of their best performing ones. This one by the company Paco Rabanne is called One Million Privé. They have the Parfum version, they have the Lucky version, they have the Intense version with that amplified rose note. Here you have cinnamon and myrrh. 
and that combination is really well done. And I'm inclined to believe that the myrrh that's used in here is maybe a poppin' ax. It's of a sweeter variety because there is this sort of creamy tonka bean, incense-y, cinnamon sweetness about it that I love, absolutely love. I mean, this is such a unique fragrance. And of all the fragrances, this is just my opinion, of course, right? But of all the fragrances that Paco Rabanne has put out, I think this is their best. The next one that's up on this list is a fragrance that I acquired a few months ago. So I'm actually looking forward to spending more time with this. And I actually, I tested it for like a week. I did a review of it and then I put it on the back burner just because it wasn't very season appropriate. Uh, but now I'm gonna be revisiting it and I actually smelled it again the other day and I'm like, man, yeah, I can't wait to wear this one more often. This one by the company Bentley, which is the car brand, is called Beyond the Collection Majestic Cashmere. I know it's a long name, uh, but the collection is called Beyond or Beyond the Collection. And there are three or four in this collection and this one is called Majestic Cashmere. So yeah, it does have cashmere on. It also has musk mallow, otherwise known as ambrette seed. And I feel like this one is also on the sweeter side. It kind of has this vanillic, coumarin sweetness about it that is very sort of enjoyable, uh, very much so puts you in the mindset of autumn just because it's a little bit on the sweeter side. And I think you'll see that there's kind of a theme here. We have the vanillas and the spices and the tonka beans and the tobaccos and so on and so forth. And so I personally find myself gravitating towards these types of fragrances. And this one, if I were to compare it to anything else, I would either compare it to by the Fireplace by Maison Martin Margiela or Noir Exquis by L'Artisan Parfumer. So those two fragrances kind of have that smooth, rich, creamy, billowy, um, olfactory texture to them and I think that this one does an incredible job. Number two on this list is a fragrance that is very sentimental for me, but even when you think about the note breakdown, it definitely puts you in the mind of autumn. And this one is one where I have tried all of the flankers except the most recent one, which I'm eager to try, but I've tried some of the lighter variations, the stronger variations, and this is the original, the Eau de Toilette. So this one is by Guerlain, I've worn a lot of this, and this is called L'Homme Ideal, which translates to the ideal man. And what you're gonna get from this one is a slightly powdery cocoa and almond combination. What a gorgeous fragrance. It just hugs you like a warm blanket. I don't know if that's a silly way of putting it, but it really is this gentle yet noticeable fragrance that is so evocative of the colder weather. And I always find myself wearing it right around this time of the year. And obviously I've had this year, I've had this for um, a few years, now for five years actually, I bought this in November of 2015 and it's an awesome scent. I am always going to have a bottle of this in my collection. And the number one fragrance on my list is one that I also enjoy quite a bit. It's one that admittedly so, I don't wear too much, even though I purchased it like two years ago. I don't wear this one a whole lot, but every time I do wear it, it's like a treat. You know, it's almost like I'm breaking edge. It's almost like a cheat day for me. You know, it's the equivalent to me, if I may paint an analogy, if you're on a diet and you're abstaining from the consumption of certain foods, and then you give yourself that one cheat day and you overindulge and it just feels like the best feeling in the world. And uh, you know, ultimately there's a pinch of guilt in there. With this one, there's no guilt, right? It just feels like a cheat day and it feels like you made the best decision ever. And I've actually been wearing this for the past two days, if I can be honest with you. And this one by <laughs> Tom Ford is called Ombre Leather. And I think, you know, people are no stranger to this fragrance, right? You have the cardamom that's in here, you have the oak moss, you have that earthy richness in the base, perhaps a little patchouli as well. And obviously you have that leather accord that's in here. And I think this one is also quite sentimental for me because not only do I have this fragrance, but I also have Tuscan leather, which is part of the private blend line. And that's a close cousin of ombre leather. And they're both quite similar in many ways. They both have a little bit of a sweetness in the opening. I think Tuscan leather has more of that buried sweetness, you know, with the, with the raspberry note or whatever it is. But this one is amazing. It's mysterious. It's enigmatic. It's, a, it's complex. I do find it to be complex. It's daring. 
and it just comes across very sophisticated, a little gothic at times as well, a little steampunk-ish. It's a gorgeous fragrance. Ombre Leather by Tom Ford. I truly feel like this is one of the brand's best, and I'm really happy that they've excluded it now from the private blend line, and they've introduced it into the signature line, which I think, on account of the new price point as well, increases the accessibility of the fragrance. So I'm hoping that more people have an opportunity to check it out, because I know myself, personally speaking, when I visit my local Macy's, I see that it's tucked away in the corner, and they're pushing Dior Sauvage, and they're pushing Blue de Chanel, and they're pushing you know, the Lum Flankers by Yves Saint Laurent. But this one is kind of sitting quietly in the corner and I'm like, man, I'm sure if more people had gotten their nose on this, they would fall in love with it. But that's it. These have been my top 10 favorite fragrances for the fall slash autumn of 2020. Some are on this list very much like, you know, John Varvato's 20. This is on this list for the simple fact that I plan on wearing it just to get a better feel for it. It's in the testing phases. And then some are classics that I've had for many years like Pure Havana and also Paco Rabanne 1 million Privé. And then some are, you know, fragrances that I went a long time without wearing. And then I recently picked them back up and I'm reminded of how much I love them. So I'm very curious to know, what do you think? What are your favorite fragrances or what is your favorite fragrance? If you have only one for the autumn of 2020, which one do you look forward to wearing the most? Go ahead and let me know, leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos by clicking on that red button in the corner and make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you next time. Bye.